There are a lot of ways to smarten up your home. It's easy to find home automation ideas for your office, your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, even your garage. But the one room that usually gets forgotten about is the bathroom. It's about time we correct that and show some smart home love to the sanctuary of the porcelain throne. I give you my interpretation of the smart bathroom. I hope we can all agree that there are a couple things that we all want from our bathrooms. First of all, we want privacy. Otherwise, we'd just keep a chamber pot in the living room. That's gross. Second, we want fragrance control, at least as much as possible. So my goal here is to make sure that we get those two things every time we use the lavatory. The first thing we need is the trigger. I can't think of a better indicator of an occupied bathroom than a sensor on the toilet. I thought about using a weight sensor on the toilet seat, but that would get pretty complicated. And besides, we don't always sit down. So instead, I decided to put an RF door sensor on the toilet lid. That'll work. This is one of those sensors that sends two codes, one when it's open and one when it's closed. And with this placement, it doesn't get in the way, since you can't really set anything else there anyways. And best of all, it doesn't have to be weatherproof. Since I already have the Sonoff RF bridge running Tasmoda, it's pretty easy to get the codes for this sensor and to make a binary sensor for it in Home Assistant. Then in the Customize menu, I'm gonna change the icon so that I don't get it mixed up with my other ordinary binary sensors. Now when the seat's up or down, I'll know about it. Yay. Setting up the trigger, that's part one. Part two is doing something useful with that information. Let's tackle smells first. I like air fresheners, but they can be a bit overpowering if they're overused. Ideally, we want it to only come on when it's needed and then turn off when it's not. I suppose I could get some sort of a gas sensor to measure methane levels, but no, that would probably just start some sort of a methane production competition in my house and there would be no winners. So what I'm gonna do instead is have the sensor on the toilet lid trigger activation of a smart plug that is connected to one of those plug-in air fresheners. The plugs I'm gonna use for this are these little round ones. There are a lot of different brands, but they all use the Tuya or the Smart Life app. And there's a component in Home Assistant for the Tuya app. That is, as of right now, on Home Assistant 0.80.3. All of this is subject to potential change in the future. There you go, you've been warned. Now I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you using Tasmoda? Well, one reason that I'm not gonna use Tasmoda in this case is because I tried taking apart some of these little smart plugs to flash them, and it is a beast. It is way too hard to make it worth the time it takes. Thankfully, the Tuya app works with Home Assistant, and I guess I don't mind using somebody else's servers for something like this. If their servers go down, it won't be that big a deal. A couple things that you probably ought to know about the Tuya component for Home Assistant. First, it isn't just the Tuya component. If you have devices that say they use the Smart Life app, they will also work with the Tuya app. I've used both of those apps for the same plugs, so I know for a fact that they're interchangeable. If you've already set up your plugs or a switch with the Smart Life app, you can redo it using the Tuya app or in the configuration for the Tuya component. You can just add this line that says you're using the Smart Life app. After you've set up your plugs with the Tuya app or Smart Life, and then set up the Tuya component in Home Assistant, your plugs will appear on the overview page. In the UI, those plugs will appear with the name that you gave them in the Tuya app, but that's not the name of the entity that we need to use those plugs for automations. Go to the States page and you can search for the plug by name. When you find it, you'll see that it has a numeric entity ID. That's the one you're gonna need for automations. I set up this automation so that when the lid on the toilet goes up, the plug with the air freshener is activated for 10 minutes. <sighs> now let's tackle the other important bathroom purpose, privacy. Probably everyone has forgotten to lock the door 
and been surprised by an unexpected guest. Or even worse, is being the one that walks in when somebody else is doing their business. Here's my solution for making sure that that never happens again and to save all of us from a whole lot of mental and emotional scars. In another video, I made a smart lock out of an electromagnet and a Sonoff SV. That's the same thing I'm gonna do here. I mount the lock to the door frame, run the wires through the wall down to the nearest switch box where I've got my 12 volt power supply and my Sonoff SV. The biggest challenge here is getting the SV and the power supply in the switch box connected to mains power. In this bathroom, I actually had to add a box in the wall because there just wasn't enough room in the existing switch box. If you're running out of space in your switch box, you can always add another one. At least in the US, they sell these boxes that you can use by just cutting a hole in the drywall and they fit a standard faceplate to make sure we don't lose any WAF points. It was either that or have to face the wrath of a woman who is actually forced to look at electrical components. <sighs> Depending on your situation, you could manage the control of this lock in a different way. The lock runs on 12 volts. These are the cheapest 12 volt power supplies that I could find. You can either control the lock by controlling the mains power that goes to the power supply or by controlling the 12 volt line that goes from the power supply to the lock. Whichever is easiest in your situation. Flashing of the Sonoff SV is done the same way that I flash everything else. Tasmoda, Sonoff.bin, flash easy, termite, backlog, done. Time to flash the Sonoff SV. We've got our USB to serial adapter. Gonna hold down the button on the Sonoff, plug it into the computer, let go of the button, start up flash easy. It's already got our COM port. It knows where we're connected. That's great news. Sonoff.bin, flash, and away we go. I don't know how it could get any simpler. And done, flash complete. Next step, leave it connected and open up Termite. Make sure you have all the right settings. Unplug it, plug it back in. If you don't see anything come up, try hitting this return key in the corner. Let's keep trying. Sometimes, there it goes. Okay, it's working. Now I've got my Tasmoda Wi-Fi stuff. There it goes. It's gonna restart. And once it's restarted, it gives you the IP address right here. Open up a browser, type in that address, 53, and there we are. Configuration, configure module, it's on FSV. We're gonna go to configuration, configure MQTT. We're gonna change the topic here to, it's gonna be the boys, bathroom lock. Okay, so when I go to console, you can see that that's the right topic. If I press the button, nothing happens. So this has been an interesting new thing. So this is button topic. Right now, if I do button topic, it's, it says the button topic is still sewn off. So that's the button on the board. I think the reason that this has been added to Tasmoda is to try and uh, eliminate people accidentally using this button and getting its other functions that are built into Tasmoda, like resetting the board, putting it into AP mode. If you press this button, it does those special functions. It doesn't trip the relay. So if you want it to trip the relay, then you have to set the button topic to one. Okay, now it'll work. And you can see it's changing in the console too. So that's that part. And now we can toggle it here also. All right, configuration. What else are we gonna configure here? We're gonna configure other because I wanna change the name of it. The name of it is gonna be the same. Boys, bathroom, lock. It's the same as the topic. So to add the bathroom lock to my configuration.yaml file, I'm gonna create a new switch. The best way to get the command and state topics that you need is to go to the Tasmoda web interface, toggle the relay on and off, and then go to the console and look at what you've got here for states. And that's what you're gonna use. So I'm gonna copy this 
and I'm just going to put it up here at the top. I like to always put the new ones at the top. Boys bathroom lock. And everything else will stay the same. That should do it. So we're going to save this. We'll go to Home Assistant. Check the config. Home Assistant has now restarted. And here's my new boys bathroom lock. If I toggle it here, I can see it's changed states there. If I toggle it there, it changes states here. So it's linked, it's working. Now we can do the automation. This first automation says if the binary sensor on the toilet goes from off to on, then we're going to turn on the bathroom lock. The next one, if the binary sensor on the boy's toilet turns off, meaning it was closed, then the bathroom lock switch will turn off. And then just to show that I'm not maybe as heartless as I'd like to think I am, I set another one here to turn the lock off if it's been on for more than 20 minutes. So if the state of the binary sensor is on for 20 minutes, then we'll turn off the lock. This way, the longest that anybody will ever get locked in the bathroom will be 20 minutes. That's just enough time to teach him a lesson. Now, over here at Lovelace, state icon, tap action toggle, switch, boys bathroom lock, left and top, and that gets it showing up here. But I don't want it to be a lightning bolt. I want it to look like the swords like this. So to do that, I need to go configuration, customization, I need to find it, boys bathroom lock and then pick the attribute to override. We're gonna pick the icon. You can just guess here if you wanna try. That's one, but I'm not exactly sure what the one was called that I wanna do, so I'm gonna to go to MDI icons, and it's the crossed swords. So I'll just kinda of search for swords and see what comes up. That's what I want, sword dash cross. So I'm gonna put sword, dash cross. There we go. Save that. Now we go back to Lovelace. There we go. And then if I want to lock it, ooh, and I can, I can even I can even hear it lock from here in my office. It's next door. Then I can unlock it. Yay. Now the trigger or switch for locking or unlocking the door is the toilet lid. When the lid is up, the door is locked, and it stays locked until the lid goes down. Now no one will ever be able to open the door while someone else is sitting on the pot. You're welcome. And as a bonus, no one will ever be able to leave the room and leave the toilet seat up. That's a double bonus. If you want to, you could add another button to lock and unlock the door, but I'm not gonna. I think the RF sensor is reliable enough if someone gets locked in, maybe I'll change my mind and add a secondary button. Of course, it probably depends on who it is. The last thing I wanted to add was a water sensor in the sink to make sure that the door stays locked and no one can leave until they've washed their hands. I haven't figured out that one completely yet, so it'll have to wait for another video. So that's it. That's my twist on the smart bathroom. Welcome to the future. As always, Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.